the, the problem is, though, is but he is, uh, like I say, at cruiserweight, he's the world champion, right? And he stepped up for this one fight against uh, David A. You could see why the, he was going to sell out. Uh, David A. used to be a cruiserweight himself, so you could see that. But with Bellu, is he... I know he's in a, classed as an heavyweight now and he's fought in the heavyweight division, but is his size, does it matter? Does it matter? Or does he? is he looking for that perfect fight, someone against, like, Joseph Parker, who you can si actually see them together and see a, 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 the kind of similar builds? You know, Tony Bailey is just a coward. You know, there's, the, Cruiserweight has always moved up to heavyweight. For even Marco Huck moved up to heavyweight and fought um, Pevetkin. You know, Gramelio Jones, all of those guys. Steve Cunning have moved up to heavyweight and fight Tyson Fury. But, um... Tony Bell is a coward. He don't want to fight no top heavyweight. He just wants to fight the likes of... He's going to cherry pick guys like David who's good cruiserweight, moves up to heavyweight, done really good, but he's finished. You know what I mean? He's a small guy. So he's going to try and cherry pick guys like that. He might try and fight Parker, but I, I think Parker knocks him out as well. Listen, it's uh, nearly two years since that amazing, um, memorable fight against Joshua. What have you made of Joshua since then? Because, uh, I don't know, in my book, there were moments where I thought you were going to win that fight, uh, Dillian. So what have you made of Joshua's career since then? We've, we've both improved. But, you know, um, you know, we both improved. You know what I mean? Um, but, you know, he's a golden boy. He won the Olympic gold medal. So they looked after him and guide him the right way. You know what I mean? Um, guide him the right way. And he's done the right thing. He's won all of his, he's won all of his fights, you know. So you can't really say much. But I, I, I don't think, um, no, he's gone to his head a bit. And he's just trying to be this massive muscle band puncher that is not really a one punch knockout guy, you know, and you can see in the last fight, if you can push him back and take his punches, you give him you give him problem and that's what I proved when I fought him, you know what I mean? I went in heavily injured and and badly out of shape and I still gave him a I still gave him a lot of problem, you know, I mean I was out of shape because I couldn't train properly because of my injuries, etc. Et but I gave him a hell of a lot of problem, you know. And um Fitch called the same thing, you know, before he two-year-old pitch goal, gave them the same thing. It just shows if you have movement, or you can take the, 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 the punishment he dish out early, you can beat him. It shows that he's very beatable. He's, he's a great athlete. He's in great shape. Physically strong guy, but he's beatable, you know? Well, I enjoyed that fight a lot. I mean, how much do you want to fight Joshua again? Listen, ever since I, ever since I left the ring, that fight, I would, I would, I'll take that fight tomorrow at a drop of a hat, but at the minute, I just have to think, this is a business as well as it is, you know, for me, that fight's personal. I'm sure you'll take the fight tomorrow. He says he wants to fight. I want to fight. I'm sure. But it's business. You know what I mean? You know, the business, the, that fight is going to be a mega fight. If, if they announce it, they Joshua going to fight tomorrow, it's going to sell. It's going to sell and it's going to blow. But the business side of it, the split, the financial side, I have to, I have to also hide up and, and work out because, like I say, it, it, it is a business as well as it is, um, you know, as well as his personal, you know what I mean? And, you know, I, I, like I said, I'll take it tomorrow. <laughs> but, you know, I got my team around me, who's just the wiser heads around me, says, listen, go and get a world title and go in in a unification fight, you and him champion. And that's why I'm pursuing the likes of Park and Deontay Wild and these guys, but these guys don't want to fight. And then the lower tier guys, you know, the fake heavyweight Tony Bellew, you know, um, Lucas Brown, you know, none of these guys want to fight. I don't understand why. They all say I'm no good, I'm rubbish, I don't look good in these fights, but none of these guys want to fight me. Why? Why don't they want to fight me? You know, I'm a massive draw. Deontay Wilder, I'm offering him $4 million to come to London and fight me, and he's making $1 million in America defending his world title in his backyard, and he can't sell a, a 10,000 seat arena. You know, these, he says I'm an easy fight. He can beat me one arm tie behind his back, but he don't want to come and fight. What does that say to you guys? You know, I'll let you guys decide that. I'll let you guys decide what you think of these guys refusing to fight me on countless occasions. Look at, even Belly, I've given him all the advantage. This is the perfect advantage for him. I ain't been training. I just want to fight. I'm in relaxed mindset. I'm out of shape at the minute. What better way for him to, to, to get in there and shut someone up who's been chasing him for the, for the best part of one year? I, I, I interviewed Joshua just a few weeks ago, and he actually said, I said, did you have to bring, did Dillian White have to bring a world title to the table? He said, no. He said, I'd give him a shot at the world title. He's a good fighter, and everybody wants to see that rematch. So he he believes that will happen down the line. On Joshua, do you think, who do you think he'll fight first? Do you think it'll be Wilder, or do you think it will be Parker? What's your feeling? It's probably going to be Parker, because Parker is easier to make. 
you know, Deontay Wilder, he, he's very deluded, you know what I mean? The man's very deluded. He wants $7 million to fight me. So if you think about it, how much he wants to fight Joshua, he's very deluded, you know. And these kind of guys just destroy boxing because they're very greedy and they're very deluded. They don't want to fight for fight's sake. They just want to sell their belt. And Deontay Wilder just want to sell his belt to the highest bidder. Same with Joseph Parker. But Parker probably is a bit more sensible and probably will take a bit more or less money because... He's making zero. He's not making no money at all. He just defended his world title against Yuri Fury on YouTube with no TV channel whatsoever. So he's in he's in a worse position than what Deontay Wilder is. And that fight is easier to make and and um you know so and it's a credible fight. So he probably fight Parker first and then set up um a massive rematch with with Deontay Wilder. Deontay Wilder needs to build his name and rise his stock because Deontay Wilder couldn't sell out his his, his, his living room. Um, if he was fighting in his living room, he couldn't sell 20 tickets to his, his, his family. <laughs> <laughs> OK, let's take all those heavyweights then. Um, Parker, Joshua, Wilder, Fury. Put them all to, if Fury comes back, put them all together, Dillian. Do you, would you maintain that you can rise above all of them and be the number one? I believe so. If I didn't believe so, I wouldn't be doing what I'm doing. I wouldn't be training as hard as I am and going in there and, and taking his side. But these fights are all... All hard fights. Like these, these guys are the elite. You know what I mean? These guys have had hundreds of fights. You know what I mean? Experience-wise, I, I I got no experience compared to these guys, but my heart and my courage and my determination and my inner strength, I believe is enough, as well as me constantly improving and getting better, is enough to be all of these guys. You know? Everyone can underestimate me, say what they want, say I'm rubbish, say I'm this and that. Get in the room with me. Like I said... Everyone say I'm rubbish, I don't hit hard, I don't box well until they're in front of me in the ring and then they realise a different story. Same with Robert Laney, see, he was saying all this stuff. He got in the ring, first two rounds was okay, I started hitting him to the body in, in, in the third round and then he just started running. Started, at the end of the fight, he said to me, oh man, I'm sorry, sorry, you know, um, sorry, you know, I, I don't know, I just, I just, you know, and... Elena said that a lot, long time to train for the fight because he was over training with, with, with Joshua and sparring with Joshua up in Sheffield and they told him about the fight, but I didn't know who he was fighting, so I never had time to prepare for him properly. But he knew, like I said to him, once he stand in front of me and I start hitting you and you understand that whatever you hit me with, I'm going to keep coming, then these guys change their mind, their mindset and their approach pretty fast. Mm. Dillian, it's been great to talk Brilliant. to you. Um, look forward to your next fight, and let's hope uh, you get right in shape for it. You, you just said you, you, you're not totally in shape right now, but um, hopefully you'll be in shape. Was it, when is it February you're fighting? Yeah, I'm fighting February 3rd at the O2. We're just waiting for an opponent to be confirmed. Um, you know, details should be released for the end, um, end of the month, early December, you know what I mean? So we're waiting to see, you know, we've had a couple of correspondents from Eddie and today, so we're waiting to see what's happening. It's just a shame we couldn't make the Tony Bellew fight. You know, we could have, we could have, he could have made so much money. We could have saved, you know, if, look how much funds he's let down, you know. These guys are a disgrace, man. Back in the days, you know, Tony Liston would have jumped in, Ernie Shavers would have jumped in, you know, Ron Lair, George Foreman, Jerry Cooney, you know, Art Mike, that's all of these guys would have just jumped in and, and fight. They've done it before, you know, they've done it before on short notice. Even Muhammad Ali done it, you know what I mean? Because they realise the importance of, of 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 relishing and saving these 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 days. Because this would have been the perfect Christmas cracker for everyone. You know, what I mean, everyone would have been like, oh, Tony Bailey versus Dylan White. Oh my God! You know, people would have tuned in. People pre-booked the pay-per-view, brought tickets, flights, and stuff. And he just uh, he just a letdown. Tony Bailey is a massive letdown. He, even I'm disappointed in him. I'm saying it because on the fight, I'm disappointed in him because of the mindset and the mentality he show was um, me approaching him for the fight. It's, it's disgusting. Do you stand by calling him a coward? I mean, this is a guy who moved up a weight to get in the ring with heavyweights. Do you stand by that? Listen, you know, boxing, everything's about timing. He would have moved up, he would have moved up to heavyweight and fight David Hay six, seven years ago. I would have fight David Hay six, seven years ago. No problem. I, you, you know, does everyone forget Tony Bell, you... He said I got knocked out by Anthony Joshua. He got knocked out by a midget, Adana Stevenson. You know, he got knocked out at light heavyweight by a guy who he called a midget. I said the guy can't punch. He got banged out by Adana Stevenson, but I don't go on about that. You know, the guy's a coward. If you're going to move up to heavyweight, you fight all comers. He said, oh, I don't want to fight Joshua. I don't want to fight Deontay Wilder, but I'm a heavyweight. How can you want to fight the top guys in the in the weight division that you're in? It doesn't make no sense. It's like me playing football and saying, oh, um... I 
mean, be, so you've been at a team and say, no, I don't want to play Arsenal, I don't want to play Chelsea, but I'll play Crystal Palace and West Ham. It doesn't make no sense. <laughs> if, you're all, if, if, if you're in the weight division, you want to fight the best. You know, that, that tells you, all it needs to tell you, he's not the best, he doesn't consider himself as the best, and he doesn't have the right mindset. He wants to fight old man who he think he can beat. And let's be honest, the fight with him and David A was a great fight. It was only great because David A refused to quit after his hamstring, after his hackily snapped. That's why the fight was so great and memorable. It wasn't because Bailey was, was exceptional or he, was, he did anything great. No, it, the fight was just good because David refused to give up. And, they, and Tony Bailey couldn't knock him out. Even the finish, he never knocked him out. David just fell out the ring and the referee thought 